equipment auction tomorrow in our neighborhood. There's a lot of stuff here. A lot of pretty good stuff. It might look junky, but this is some of this stuff is pretty good and very functional. And it doesn't surprise me to see all this stuff for sale. Um, grain farming has become, you know, a giant, giant industrialized operation, but cattle farming, and that's beef. Well, cattle farming, 50% of all cattle are raised on small farms with less than 30 head, and usually by people my age. I'm in my 60s. These guys are retiring, and they are selling their equipment. I don't see a lot of small farmers. I don't see a bunch of 30-year-old guys coming out here to farm 30, 40, 50 head of cattle and a couple head of sheep. So I don't know where that's going to come from. I imagine it'll have to come from Brazil and New Zealand. But you need a lot of things if you're going to farm. You need a bush hog. You need a hay tedder. You need an auger. You need a sprayer. That's a nice bush hog. I think they've got the same one. Mine looks a little better. You need a manure spreader. You need tractors. You need a gravity wagon. This is all stuff you need to have if you're going to farm, let's say, anything less than 200 acres and you're going to keep anywhere from 30 to 100 head of cattle. And if you think the price of beef is high now. You haven't seen anything yet. Beef is going to become unaffordable for the average person or a special treat. You'll be eating animals fed on a, in a confined um, a CAFO, which is a confined animal feeding operation. There's a decent looking head catch. Old school. Can't squeeze them. Can it squeeze them? I don't know. Let's see how it squeezes. I don't think so. Still. Is it the right price? But we've got a problem. You know, we've got these soy boys and uh, you know, people with peculiar degrees who think they should be working in some institution someplace. And I don't know who is going to be growing our food. Unless we're all going to be vegetarians eating nothing but there's a huge soybean field for you. Here, you can eat all your soy here, guys. Make you coconut milk or soybean milk or whatever it is you guys drink. But you're not going to have the chutzpah and the manliness to, to do this, eating like that. There's a nice piece of John Deere running gear. Now you have to resurface it, of course, but that's a nice piece of equipment right there. It looks in pretty good shape, and those are great tires. I wish I was available tomorrow to come to this auction. There's some stuff here I would definitely buy. It's an odd looking gravity wagon. stuff here. All stuff you need if you're going to live a homesteading lifestyle. And getting all this stuff and getting it to your farm, it takes years and a lot of money. Not just buy the land. you got to put up fencing. you got to put up barns. <laughs> you need this equipment. And then in a few years, you'll start selling your calves. It's a major, major investment, major life decision. But if someone doesn't do it, we're going to be eating nothing but cornflakes. Yuck.
This guy here, this is a moderator bull calf. I think he's 18 months old. I mean, look how small he is and thick. And you'll have no problem. Uh, I mean, he'll make beautiful calves with uh, full-size cows, but they, they won't have problems calving. They'll come right out like a stick of butter. So I'm breaking the six-year-old broodmare to work, and she's been very difficult. Uh, darn near almost killed her once. And so I put a surcingle on here with a flying W. This controls her front feet. And so she can't run away from me. I mean, she can still try to kick, but she doesn't really want to. I can take her down whenever I, I want to. I'd like her to stand still right now, which she's not doing. So I'm going to teach her a lesson. Pull her leg up. That'll stop her. Whoa! The horses not a Disney movie. Horses do not come trained and tamed and cooperating with you or dying to work for you. You have to break them of the idea that they are the boss and they have to get used to the idea that you, who are one-tenth their size, are the boss. Some horses are harder than other ones. This one's a hard horse. She's always been difficult. But she will break. They take a month or two, but she will break. She had a pretty good day today in the round pen. But she's not a trustworthy horse by a long shot. And uh, what is today? October 7th? October 8th? I'm hoping by Halloween that I can put her in line with other horses and let her work in the field. And so every day, twice a day, she'll go in the round pen, get lost around, go, stop, go, stop, come. And then she'll get put in the lines like this and learn how to woo and learn how to go. This is how we go without her running. Good girl. Good girl. Let's do a woe. Whoa. We haven't got the woe yet. But we're working on it. Every time she misbehaves, I pull her feet up. And I let her put them down. And if I have to, I'll take her all the way down. But I don't want to. I just want her to know that I can. Okay, let's try again. Good girl. Notice she doesn't run off. She can pull me out of my teeth. Oh. Come on. Good girl. Look at you. Look at you. Whoa. I'm Greg Jeffers, author of the best-selling book, Prosperous Homesteading. I'm an author, writer, blogger, and homesteader. And this is my labor of love. My latest novel, Seven Years of Famine, is available now at Amazon. Thank you.